All right, so what is NA? NA stands for naturally aspirated. Quick search on Google Dictionary, it reads like this. Naturally aspirated, especially of an engine, supplied with air without the use of supercharging or turbocharging. So today's video is going to focus on NA engine tuning and see if it's worth doing. First thing to go over is what changes when an ECU is tuned. One, ignition timing. Two, air fuel ratio. Three, cam phasers slash cam timing. Four, throttle maps and five, limiters such as rev limiter, shift points, and sometimes even speed governors. So, there are definitely more specific maps like torque limiters and such, which we don't really need to get into, but those are the basics that gets changed with most tunes out there. By changing all the parameters, tuner is able to achieve usually a five to 10% gain in power for most NA vehicles. So if you have a bigger engine with more power, you're more likely to gain more horsepower numbers than a car with smaller engine and less power. This is why you see people with big V8 LS engines getting way more power than FRSs with four cylinders when they're tuned. But power gain isn't everything. By optimizing the airflow with cam timing and changing throttle maps, the tuner can bring about smoother or sometimes better power delivery on top of the power gains. Also, the power gain number is usually only shown in peak power, but at times, if you look at the dynagraphs, Many cars gain power under the graph that's higher gains than the peak numbers. Here's a dynograph to show you what I mean. Okay, so if you take a look at this dynograph here, this is um, on a naturally aspirated Genesis Coupe 3.8 as an example, okay? So if you look at the peak numbers, it's only gained 16 wheel horsepower and about 18 wheel torque, okay? So we're, we're on the low range of the five to 10 uh, percent gain but don't be discouraged the reason i chose this graph to show you is to show you that the peak numbers isn't everything so if you follow the graph here the red lines are basically representing when the car was on stock tune the blue line is after the tune itself first thing you'll notice is that now instead of revving to 6800 rpms we're revving out to 7200 rpms okay or 71.5 as this one shows so that's that's where you're going to see a a difference in rev range with the two uh with the tune and then next i want to show you some of the key differences under the curve that makes the tune worthwhile so if you're just looking at the peak numbers i said before it's not that impressive you're like ah 16 wheel horsepower whatever you know i'll just go on a diet and probably be better you know zero to 60 time but that's not true let's take a look at this torque graph for instance all right the blue line here is the after torque the red line here is the before torque you notice there's a huge gap right here all right that gap is not told in the story right here on the peak number so let's see what the gap here is like let me click here so in in this current RPM, which let me see, it's at 4,327 RPMs. Before the tune, it was making 239 foot pounds of torque. After the tune, it's making 266 foot pounds of torque. That's 26 or even maybe 27 foot pounds of torque more than what the stock was making at the time. Also, check out how the graph goes. Notice it goes up and then back down almost has like that dip right here but if you look at the tuned graph you can't find that dip anywhere it's nice and flattened out and it's carrying power all the way through to red line now let's look at where the horsepower difference is if you look here right at the end towards the end so you know the stock revenue is 6800 so we'll take a look at 6700 the horsepower at 6700 rpms is 262 the horsepower at 6,700 after the tune, now you're at 294, all right? That's 32 wheel horsepower difference at that RPM. And before the tune, you'd be shifting. Whereas in the after tune, you'd be driving all the way to 7,200 RPMs, which makes you faster than the stock tune significantly, even though the peak numbers may not show that. 
All right, so that's what I wanted to show you with that. Now the question is, why don't the factory tune the cars better? How do aftermarket tuners achieve better power and is it dangerous? So let's answer that in order. One, why don't the factory tune the cars better? Answer is they're limited in what they can do for tuning as they're usually tuning for lower octane fuel. Even cars that come factory tuned for 91 or 93 octane, they aren't aggressively tuned and can get away with 87 octane mistakes from time to time. They're also limited in trying to achieve a certain MPG rating and other emissions related items. So pushing for optimal power isn't on the top of their list. They also have to build in enough headroom for their cars to last past their warranty periods. So all cars from factory are tuned richer than they need to be. Number two, how do aftermarket tuners achieve more power and is it dangerous? Answer is this, they tune for higher octane fuel. Tuning for 91 or 93 octane will allow the tuner to push the ignition timing further, mess with the cam phasers more, and they can also lean out the air mixture to a more optimal power making mixture compared to the super rich OEM tune. This is how extra power is made with an ECU tune. Obviously, if you tune for even higher octane, such as E85 or even race gas, you can see even more gains. Is it more dangerous than factory tunes? Yes, of course, but only if you don't pump the right octane gas. As all the parameters are now adjusted for higher octane fuel, if you make the mistake of pumping a lower octane fuel than what the tune is, tune is for, you will risk detonation and knock, which can damage your engine. But if you keep up with your regular maintenance and the correct octane fuel, it's not something you have to worry about. So in conclusion, you need to look at more than just peak power gains. The overall power band increase is way more important than the peak numbers. Also, the other features that the tuner changes, such as the throttle map, rev limiter, speed governor, etc., is also beneficial and improves driving quality. Keep up with your fuel octane and regular maintenance and you will be able to enjoy the tune without much worry. The ultimate question of it is, is it worth your money to tune your RNA cars? Well, the answer is completely up to you, the consumer. Weigh the benefit gains versus the price you have to pay then make your decision. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helps making your decision easier, and I will see you on the next one. Thank <music> you.